What's up guys and gals and welcome back to the Nerd Castle. Today in the world of indie games, we're going to be taking a look at a title called Lakeside. Uh, this is a very, very limited alpha that the developer has sent over as of this morning. And he put a warning on it. He said that like, yo, this build is buggy. It's not quite ready for like release and all that kind of stuff. But I did want you to check the game out and provide some feedback and take a look at the title. So we're going to do exactly that today. This is a game about building as much city as you can on top of kind of a remote fantasy island. You've got all kinds of stuff in here. The accumulation of culture. You've got to manage your food supply. All that kind of stuff. And while the game is still a little bit rough around the edges, I did spend about an hour with it prior to recording this video. Just to get a feel for what the game is going for. And I figured we would show it off now so anyways if you wanted to wishlist this game check it out i've got a link for you down below in the description where you can find that and then on top of that you can also find a link to my discord and my twitch stream just in case you wanted to hang out live so without further ado let's play ourselves like a little bit of lakeside here shall we we'll start a new game the grand pyramid token of our great nation towering and dazzling to everyone who saw it but it only started as a single stone and a dreamer there we go, so welcome to our village. I'm going to go ahead and pause the game off because the game does make use of a push-pause system. The game's also got a tutorial up in here, but really this game is very, very simple as of right now. Uh, the structure is not quite there yet, like that onus for why the player keeps going. It doesn't feel super apparent in the current build, but really all you need to know is that we are trying to keep our resources balanced so that our population does not die off and it keeps going upwards. Every single time you hit certain thresholds of population, you get to unlock a new building. And I may take certain building picks during this, uh, just due to the fact that I know what is coming later on and kind of like this alpha build. And it is definitely possible to kind of like softly soft lock yourself in this current build by not picking the right buildings. It seems as though the developer may be aware of that because there are certain events that seem to instantly solve it when you soft lock yourself, but by your building picks you can definitely kind of hit a wall with the progression of kind of the tutorial storyline and then you won't be able to complete it. And so sometimes I'm going to pick things even though they may not seem like the super fun, let's do a YouTube video, show off the cool thing. Uh, aspect of the game. Uh, that's because I'm probably prepping for the tutorial, but for right now, we kind of want to look after our food supply. So the basic flow of the game is, as you play the game, time is going to move along. The game plays in real time. This is the amount of housing that we have. This is the amount of population we have. If your population gets higher than your housing, the people die of exposure back to the amount of housing that you have. On top of that, every single year, every population eats one food. Anybody that doesn't get a pop or doesn't get a food dies. And so anyways, that's really kind of that triumvirate right there is balancing your housing versus your food production versus your amount of population. It's kind of like this triangle that you're constantly fiddling with, trying to get the number to go up a little bit higher, utilizing the exact same tiny limited space that you have to build. And so anyways, you'll get upgraded buildings down the line that'll make that happen. But for right now, we have no food production, which means that pretty much they're just going to be eating through our granary. So we need to get on top of that. I'm going to build a farm. I don't know exactly where I want to put the farm. But I think I'm probably going to put it like right there off to the side. Uh, the other thing that we need to do is we need to gather some resources. So we click on the little basket right there and we'll tell them to beat down that stone. And then we'll tell them to chop down that forest. And that should give us a slow but trickling supply yearly of wood and stone. It's not going to be a lot, but it'll be something. Now, if you stop working on these nodes, they do come back. They replenish themselves. I don't think the stone does, but the trees definitely regrow. And that's going to be one of the pivotal decisions you're going to have to make in this game is how much do I want to deforest my little island? Because you can deforest it and get yourself a ton of resources so that you can just build like a madman, but then there are a number of buildings in the game that benefit from having access to forests or benefit from access to having an untouched stone node or something like that, and so sometimes you deprive yourself in order to get to like the cooler meta thing later on. For right now, we have like four forests on this island, like how many do we have? We have, yeah, we have like five forests, so I, I don't mind chopping one down just to get us an initial building supply. But we also need housing, so let's go ahead and do that, because we only have five housing, which means our population is never going to get higher than five. 
So what I'll do is I tend to prefer to build my housing on the upper layer. The reason for that is selectivity can be a little bit weird in this game when you've got a bunch of stuff on like the top level, but you've also got stuff on the low level that's like three or four stories tall that's overlapping it. It can be difficult to select certain buildings. Now there is a button that makes it a little bit easier right here that will basically fade out everything on the bottom layer so that you can get to it. Uh, but still, it's an extra click that I prefer to avoid, and I pretty much don't have to use this button at all if I build stuff that is modular on the top platform versus stuff that is not modular on the bottom platform. And what does Splat mean by modularity? Well, I'll show you. So the housing in this game is actually kind of interesting. So if you build a house, you can click on that house and then just like move in a direction and you can expand it into kind of like a custom house and you will unlock more upgrades for your houses later on that allow them to get taller and taller and bigger and bigger until you have like these weird sprawling basically apartment complexes that people live inside of and I sort of dig that so we'll build that out to the left to get our population up to 15 and then from there we will build another house and we will maybe just make that one tall like so and as you can see uh, we've unlocked our first reward. So we'll click right here and it's going to let us pick a building. Now I know from experience that the tutorial is going to require me to have a granary. So I'm going to take the granary now rather than later because there is a chance that if you take other buildings, you may run out of unlocks without having the granary or without having certain things that they want you to have. And that's when the game kind of slows to a crawl while you wait for a random event to basically fix the problem for you. Uh, the people have spoken and they are asking for you to build three farms. I think I could do that. What's a farm going to set me back? Two rocks and five wood. Okay. Yeah, I think I can live with that. We'll go ahead and plop a farm right there. We'll just put all of our farming in one spot, basically, so that it's nice and organized and we know where it's at. And maybe another farm... Well, it doesn't like any of my placements over there, so we'll go ahead and we'll put another one right there. Although I may bulldoze these farms at some point and re-move them around to make things a little bit easier to work with. All right, we're about to hit 20 population. There we go, and we've got an offer from a traveler. A foreign architect has arrived from a nearby town and offered one of their designs. You can choose a new building design for free. That sounds amazing to me. It's the water well. The water well is going to increase our max population because max population in this game is actually not set by the amount of housing you have, interestingly enough. It's set by the amount of kind of infrastructure and support buildings you have. So things like farms, sewers, doctor's offices, uh, transit nodes and roads, basically. Like things that basically comprise... Like, services that the government provides basically increase your capacity for population, but then you also have to house those people as well. Uh, we got this quest done, so we've got two rewards waiting. Let's see if we've got anything good. We've got an orchard, uh, so it gives us 10 food, and then it will give us 50 wood per year if we demolish it, but it takes gold. We've got a housing upgrade here, and we've got a general storage. Let's take the general storage first. And then we've also got a lumber mill, a temple, or an orchard. I can't do the orchard just yet because I can't make gold as of right now. One thing I would say is that they need to gray out. This is stone right here, but it kind of looks like metal if you compare it to the color on the tooltip up here. And so anyways, for like a short period while I was first trying out the game, I thought that metal wasn't in the game yet and that it was just giving me a pass, basically. Um... I don't think that's how... I think that's actually stone right there. Because I think metal has a tooltip that looks like the gold but blue. But they may want to make this a little bit grayer just so it's all in unison with the entire UI design. Anyways, I don't really know what I want to take. Uh, lumber mill is nice for when we've chopped down all of our forests because it provides wood even if you don't have trees. It does take up a lot of space though. Like it's got a very, very large footprint. So I don't know. Maybe we'll, maybe we'll try out a temple. We'll get our people to praise the sun or something. The people have spoken and they would like a granary. All right, we will build a granary. Uh, the granary probably can just go over here next to all the farms. That seems like that would be the logical, intelligent place to put it. We're producing too much food right now, uh, largely due to the fact that we haven't built housing or like wells or anything yet. 
but we actually need more wood too. So I'll probably queue them up on chopping down another forest on that side. We're almost topped out on stone too. We can only hold 50. So the next building we may want to build is maybe like a general storage. We need 20 wood in order to get that done though. So I think we're going to have to wait for the tick at the end of the year. So there is our general storage. We'll pop it right next to the chieftain's hut. I don't know what the chieftain's hut does. I can't honestly tell you. We've completed that quest though, which means that we get a reward. We can get a market. That allows us to sell our surplus food. So if we're storing more food than we can actually store, uh, it rots at the end of the year. If you have a market, it sells it for gold. That would get us into orchards and things of that nature. So I think it's not a terrible idea. Might be okay. There's also a housing expansion right here for our single two stories. We can add a little shed onto the left of it. Um, let's go house expansion for right now, just so I can show you what that looks like. There you go. So as you can see, we can span these houses. Boop, boop. There it is. Uh, we can now hold 35 people. Your hunters have requested resources so that they can go on a hunt. Spend 15 wood to help the hunt and get rewards. It may take a while. I don't, I'm too short, unfortunately. It's been a problem that I've faced my entire life, but this time around, it's a much more material problem. Let's go ahead and build a water well. There we go. That'll increase our pop up to 40. And so we should be able to push that a little higher. There are events in this game for like winter seasons and like hot seasons and things of that nature. But that sort of ties back into like, I think the game needs like a, like a little infusion of structure and predictability. And so what I mean by that is right now, basically every five to 10 seconds or so a year passes. I would suggest that maybe the game goes too fast. Instead, subdividing each year into a little meter that fills up down here for each season with each season lasting like you know 10 12 seconds uh, and having different events that can happen inside of those seasons would feel a tiny bit more structured to my eye now i know that they're going for kind of a simple city building experience so i may be speaking outside of turn here with the overall design criteria of the game but that is one thing that popped out at me for the hour that i played is sometimes it feels like i've played for 10 minutes and it's already been like 40 years in game and so anyways i do think the game could afford to be subdivided a little bit further and then when these events happen, I would love to see that actually implied by the way that the world works. Uh, so the game has this beautiful pixel art, just absolutely fantastic. This game is gorgeous to look at. It is fantastic when it comes to the visual presentation. That being said, like none of these events really seem to do anything. Like the winter season doesn't cover the ground with snow or add like white pixels to all of these areas right here to denote that there's like, you know, snow all over the trees or on top of the rocks or on top of the houses. Uh, when you get to like a rainy season, there's no overcast that happens with like rain falling down into the foreground water and like the boats kind of being batted around and their sails whipping a little bit harder. Stuff like that. I, I think with what they're going for, with such a graphical game where kind of the visual feast is such a large portion of what they're trying to put forward like the mastery of the pixel art art form uh, those little supplementary details I think are really really gonna matter when the game goes live and so anyways for right now we don't really have a whole lot to play with I don't think I've unlocked the market yet so I think we're gonna have to get to unlocking the market before too long our food has been spoiling yeah that's not unpredictable let's go ahead and get another house down over here and we'll build it in the same, since that's the unlock that we have, we'll kind of build it in the same format as the other three. It's not going to look quite as satisfying because these are the exact same three graphics. But we've only unlocked like a certain upgrade path to our houses so far. And so, eh, we're stuck with what we're stuck with. Uh, trader arrives. He is selling 60 wood for the price of 20 gold. Now I can't afford it, unfortunately. We do have an unlock, though. Uh, we need the market in order to keep our tutorial going. So we'll take the market, and in fact, I'll plop the market down right there. Right when people enter town, they should go into the market. And as you can see, our excess food is going to start getting sold uh, as gold, basically. Uh, the one thing is consumption up here is going to imply that. And so our consumption, well, our consumption may be as bad as it looks. I don't know. We may want to pick up like a new food building or something. We've got a fishing dock. That's not a bad idea. I feel okay about that. Two of those would bump us up to plus 10 food. Yeah, we'll take a fishing dock. Sure. And the fishing dock does not take up building space. 
Very nice. I actually was unaware of that. I don't think that I've ever taken the fishing dock before. And so we'll just build both of those right now, one on each end of town. There we go. Looks good to me. Uh, we're also in the market for another well to increase our population cap. So I will go ahead and do that, although I know not where I wish to place said well. Maybe right there will work out. Perfect. We've got two more weather events. Apparently it's a dry season. No clue what that means. We've got overlapping dry seasons. We've got dry squared. It's getting mathematical on our asses out here. And we've got another building unlock. Uh, the Hunter's Lodge is quite good. It gives you 15 food if there are forests around. It's very, very expensive, though. That's the downside to the Hunter's Lodge, is that it's expensive, and also it's got a massive footprint on the map. And so you are trading a big chunk of your buildable space for something that produces a lot of food. And, and so this is kind of like a, a building you've got to plan an economy around, in my opinion. Otherwise, things get a little bit weird. I'm going to take it, just so you guys can see what that looks like. How's our food looking right now? People want their town to grow and prosper, reach 100 pop. Okay, I will work on that to the best of my abilities. Uh, we're sitting at 60 right now. Okay. Food consumption's at 25. Production is at 25. Yeah, I think we are actually going to have to lean on the Hunter's Lodge pretty heavily. Let's go ahead and put a Hunter's Lodge in the backfield right there. That should bump it up by 25. I don't know if it needs to spin up first or if it's actually like working at capacity right now. Oh, the dry season might be nerfing our production. Maybe that's what's happening. Oh, we got an earthquake. A powerful earthquake was felt across the land. Some buildings might have crumbled. One building was destroyed. What got destroyed? Was it one of my farms? Oh, uh, it was one of my farms. Okay, so we'll knock down the ruin right there. And then we will do our best to install another one. Because we're already having food problems, and I don't want the food problems to get worse. Yeah, I think the dry season made it so that our buildings we're not producing enough food it looks like we can support 56 people so with like a little bit more food we could push this skyward i would like to get a temple built though and start working on my culture yeah let's put a temple right there that sounds okay we'll start accumulating a little bit of culture sounds like a plan and then from there as soon as we get how fast are they chopping down these trees over here i have my curiosities not fast enough, in my opinion. We may be sitting around for a little while before we get rid of those forests. Oh, there's fires! A fire is broken out in your city. Having a well can prevent fires. Yeah, I have two. I have two. Maybe it's, like, radius-based. Oh, they burned down my hunting lodge, too. What a bunch of jerks. All right, well, we get a new reward here. We can get the Great Water Well. Or we can get a big water mill. The big water mill gives us 50% food bonus production. Phew, so they're making me choose here. Do I want pop cap or do I want mad food output? I... I think I'm going to go with the food output. I think I'm going to go with food output because I feel like in my previous plays, that's what I've struggled with the most. Uh, so we're going to need to tear down all those buildings right there and unfortunately rebuild them. It's just the way she goes. Uh, so we're going to try to get the Hunter's Lodge back up. Because we have actually like zero food production right now, which is actually kind of horrifying. I need to stop entering into that menu with the deconstructor on my clicker. There we go. Perfect. Uh, we are back on top of the barrel. But some people did starve of, die of starvation, apparently. Bummer. Not much I can do about that, but that's, you know, when half your city burns down, you, you make hay, all right? Uh, the big water mill I'm actually really interested in, and so I may start devastating further forests in order to get after it. Because our production right now is 56. One big water wheel will give us another 25 food. The chieftain of a nearby village has come to offer you small ornaments in recognition of the everlasting peace between our people. You've received 15 gold. I, Yeah, dude. Some random guy walks up and just like, hey, 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 here's 15 fist-sized nuggets of gold. Treat yourself, chieftain. I dig that. I can get, I can get down on that right now. Uh, we are going to need some more houses, I think. 
Luckily, we've got like a little bit of room right here. So we'll take those up just a little bit. We are still carrying basically the population that we can hold on to. However, we do have the big water wheel right here, which I will put right there. And that should increase our food pretty considerably. Yeah, we're producing 86 food now. That's just magnificent. Sounds great. Uh, we are getting a little bit tight on space. We should free up some space when that rock and that forest is down. Oh, cool. We got an offer from a trout. He gave us the great water well for free. Plus, fitty population and protects from fires. Okay. It takes 40 and 40, though. We don't have enough stone. And then a foreign emissary has arrived at the city and is asking for a payment in order to build up a strong relationship with his city-state. He is asking for 10 gold. Sure. I just got 15 for free, so I'm 5 net positive, and diplomatic relations are on the rise. What, what? No, uh, no uh, Suez Canal crisis type situation for me, sir. No thank you. All right, so we can carry about as many people as we can carry right now. I did need to take a look. That forest is almost gone. That rock is almost gone. That forest, I can't see because there's a boat in the way. Sir, can you move? Sir, can you move your sloop? Thank you, sir. Your sloop is parked in an undesignated slooping area. All right, no slooping allowed. I'm going to need you to pull it on over to the left. Otherwise, I'm going to I'm gonna have to fit you up with a transit citation, sir. All right. Yeah, that's just sloop it off to the left, my man. Sloop it out. Just go ahead and sloop off screen in shame. Thank you. All right. Uh, I want the big water wheel next. We can put in another hunter's lodge, which would help with food. But, like, how is our consumption 86 right now? We only have 61 people. Like, our consumption should literally be identical to our population on any given go. I don't understand how our consumption went up to like 80 something when we only have 58 people. Maybe they sold some for gold. Maybe that's what it was. They sold some of the excess food for gold. Uh, a trader reached the town gates and brings goods from all over the world. He'll trade 30 stone for 30 wood. Yeah, I could use some stone. And then before the stone falls out of my inventory, I'm going to put in a water wheel over here. Look at that. We've got a sweet water wheel. Name another kingdom that's got rad water wheels like me. I'll wait. I'll wait. Uh, is there anywhere where I can build this bad mamma jamma? Well, the stone is officially gone, which is nice. But it's not really letting me build where I want to build. Can I unlock something new? We've got a water mill. 15% mood. Oh, it's another one that increases productions. Nice. I'm going to take the left, right, and top expansion. That's what, that's what I desire. Because that actually solves a problem for me right now, which is like, how do I house all these people? There we go. Uh, consumption still pretty nasty. We've got enough gold to last us a little while. Part of me is tempted to get rid of the market so that we can build up a surplus. Maybe build another granary. It'd be cool if you could stack the granaries too, instead of like taking up a building spot. Uh, your town is growing and people choose to migrate here. You got 10 migrants. That's not that's not great right now. I don't really have the housing for all you nerds. Like, I, I would love to welcome you to my great and powerful society, but uh, I've been kind of slacking on building the things that I'm supposed to build. There we go. All better. We should be able to fit everybody now. Unfortunately, everybody's going to starve to death. So, I'm going to have to build another Hunter's Lodge. Although, I don't know if I actually have a spot where I can put it. Doesn't look like I have a spot where I can put it. It's on my click. Oh, maybe it's not on my... Build... Oh, we already have two of... Oh, we can only have one. I thought I could have two of that. Bummer. Okay. Well. I'm going to have to contemplate the... Oh, we can have five farms. Nice. Nice. I didn't realize I could add a few more farms. Not that I really have any place to put them. I think we've kind of run out of landmass here. Some people died of starvation. I'm actually, like, kind of okay with that. Oh. Pick a reward. A T2 expansion for our houses. Or we can get a hamlet, which is plus 20 housing capacity. Uh, fish production. We can get a harbor. And we get traders. Yeah, I'll take that. That might allow me to, like, fix problems here. Uh, where does the harbor go? There we go. We'll just slap it in the water real fast. We've got another building option. 
masonry provides 50% bonus stone. If you have no stone resources, it now produces more. Okay. Or a tier two house. That would save some space. I wouldn't hate it. Let's take the tier two house. Does the tier two house expand the same way these ones do? Let's find out. So there's a tier two house. And it holds 20 people. And it looks like we have to... Oh, no, our food has been spoiled. Oh, no, dude, a bunch of bees came and ate all my food. Bees, dude. You just can't trust them. I do like the way that the buildings blend together when they're next to one another. That's actually, like, a really cool feature. I like it a lot. And with the Tier 2 houses, though, I need to keep working on this. I'm not convinced that we're getting the 20 housing bonus from these because it still says 35 for some reason. Yeah, it says we're, this should be 60 right here that we should have, but we don't have 60. This may not be the solution to my problem that I thought it would be. We may have to go back to the previous houses. Those ones look like they're bugged. They're not working properly, I don't think. These ones, however, do seem to be working. Yeah, these ones are definitely adding to the amount of population we can have. So... That kind of leaves us right back at the exact same place we were. Kind of a bummer. Little bit of a bummer. Not super upset about it. It just kind of is what it is. Let me get these houses rebuilt. All right, so now that I've rebuilt, like, some of it, I do have room for a few more farms. I've also got room for another granary. And I would kind of suggest we plop that down somewhere just to get our food storage up. Uh, just because we're selling... Like, look, look, look how much gold we have, dude. We have so much gold. Like, I'm wealthy, and I have, like, nothing to spend it on. Uh, the harbor said that it would bring in more traders, and I do think that I've had more events pop up, in all honesty. I'm still... I'm, I'm low on, on footprint, though. I don't have a whole lot of space, unfortunately. No, dude! Oh, it was only 10 food? That's not that bad. I can live with 10 food being gone. Let's see if we can push this thing up to 100 population real quick. I'm gonna have two water wheels. Oh, man. All right, I need another well, too. I guess we'll put that right there, and that should get us somewhere in the wheelhouse of 100 people to finish this little tutorial mission. I don't know if it's going to add more in this build, like, because from the opening title screen, like, they had this massive mound that they could build on. So I don't know if it's just going to, like, rain city sections at some point that let me build up higher, but I think we're just about tapped out on what we can accomplish here. And we do have another reward... 70% food bonus production? Yeah, I think that's probably about all that I can do for right now. There we go. Little water mill right there. Yup, that's what I like to see. Uh, and it looks like we're actually kind of out of prompts here. Uh, we've got masonry, we've got a temple, a big harbor, which gives us plus 50 fish production, my dude. Oh, boy. Is that just an upgrade to the previously existing harbor? I have questions. Sure, put it right there. Why not? Just throw that thing on in there. Our food production should just be absolutely nuts right about now. And then I think from there, there's not really too much more to do. Except, like, build more houses, basically. I think we need another water wheel in order to make everything work. Oh, nice. We've got a bathhouse for plus 50 population. Yeah, I could do that. What's the bathhouse going to set me back? Oh, it takes monies to build the bathhouse. Gotcha. 
So you got to have some ducats coming on in. All right. Well, that's. I mean, this is this is Lakeside. I think the game is fairly limited right now with regards to like what you can do given the small. Not because there's not buildings in the game. In fact, I'll show you. Uh, you can play the game on creative mode. And on creative mode, uh, they've got all the buildings in here, and there seem to be like a lot of them. There is some bleed over in between them. Like some of them seem like direct upgrades to like the last thing down the line. Oh, we got we got a bad Hunter's Lodge, apparently. There's like a better version of it. I didn't even... I thought there was two separate graphics for the Hunter's Lodge, and they did the same thing, but no, one's better than the other. But yeah, it does seem like there's a lot of buildings in the game, at least for like a .3 alpha, assuming that like point... Or, uh, so .3 alpha, assuming 1.0 is the ultimate goal, like, the game is gorgeous. My only real observation is that, like, it feels like time maybe goes by a little bit too fast. And then when events happen, it's not immediately apparent for, like, weather and, like, what happens there. Like, you can infer pretty easily by going through your meters and whatnot. Uh, but, yeah. Like, if the I think the game could afford to be, like, a little bit slower playing and a little bit subdivided. And then I, I feel like it needs some kind of structural mechanic, uh, a la, like, Frostpunk. Or, you know, one of those games to really keep the player contending with the environment to move forward. But seeing as the game is very early on in development, I'm not going to suggest that because it may be planned later on down the line. And it's just in this build that we have hands on with. It's not in yet. And so anyways, for right now, I'm very, very pleased with the way that the game looks. It's absolutely gorgeous. I can't wait to build like a giant tiered city like this one on the title screen where I have to pan upwards and pan downwards to like get to all my various little areas. I do think there may be kind of a cool thing they can do with buildings interlocking, like getting bonuses and whatnot based on buildings being adjacent to one another and then like blending together into like a farmhouse hybrid or like a granary, you know, farm hybrid or something like that might be kind of a cool idea. But yeah, I'm not going to speak on it too much because obviously the game is in point three point five right now, which means that it's not even like halfway to like completed if we're, I mean, that's how I always think about it with alpha numbers and release numbers, but sometimes that's not the way it works. But either way, it's a gorgeous, beautiful game. I think it shows promise, and I will see you all next time. My name is Splattercat. I sift through the pile to find what's worthwhile in the world of indie games every single day so that you don't have to. Today up on the chopping block, we were checking out a little city building title called Lakeside. Tomorrow, we will be checking something else out. Thank you for hanging out with me. Thank you for sharing the luxury of your time with me, and I'll be back later. Bye, everybody.